Yo, what is good, yo? It's your boy Ty, back here with another video, another season award video. It's actually crazy to think that we're already almost through season three. So each season basically lasts 45 days. So if you think about it in that kind of way of thinking, we're at exactly 33% of the way done with NBA 2K21, I think. Maybe even more than that because they stopped dropping content late in the year. So it's kind of crazy to think about it that way and hopefully, 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 hopefully that season four uh, gives us the best content so far, the most exciting players, and obviously it's just a good season uh, for, for the future. But looking back at season three, there was a lot that happened in season three. It's like I said, 45 days long. So a lot of the cards that you guys are going to see in these awards, uh, in this kind of award ceremony, if you guys, if you guys, if you guys want to call it that, are cards that you might have forgotten about, but that were released in season three. So we'll go through everything, the best defense players player offensive player the jeeziest uh, everything and then we'll at the end of it we'll give like the all pink diamond team all ruby team and those awards out as well but if you are new to my channel and have not yet loved my team content make sure you smash the subscribe button closing in on 40,000 subscribers the recent support has been absolutely ridiculous and i cannot thank you guys enough so the first award today that we are going to be talking about is the cheesiest player that came out in season three now you guys are going to see guys like magic johnson on here because if you think about it magic johnson's six foot nine how many point guards do we have that is are taller than even like six five six six that can do what magic can do he's a great defender comes basically pretty complete on the defense end. he has an 84 three ball i think now the only thing that really holds me back on current gen there's two things first thing are his lack of hot spots and really the lack of showtime dunks as well as his dribble style his dribble style is just something that is absolutely terrible and something that i don't know if i'll be able to get over throughout the course of this year so something that i wish was changed but the way he dribbles now on current gen he basically walks up the court but nonetheless is still very very cheesy in 2k the next card today is for his time rudy gobert was very cheesy i know a lot of people liked him over Ch tim duncan i personally wouldn't say i did but he gave you kind of the cheesier feel in, in a sense taller than tim duncan very lengthy i just was never loving his release but still nonetheless a similar guy obviously in the flash glitch set that was just an absolute cheese ball and last but not least the triple threat offline token reward wayne Embry was very cheesy i think he's six eight six nine maybe but the thing i love about this wayne Embry is he comes with hall of fame showtimes comes with a ton of showtime dunks defensively you couldn't ask for a better player has a three ball and he's in triple threat offline so a lot of people did have wayne Embry, and if you've had wayne Embry, you know how truly cheesy the card can be but there's really only right, one right answer to the most cheesy uh or the cheesiest card that came out in this season and i think it's pink diamond magic johnson by far because if you know how to use this card he is tough to stop i've played some guys that know how to use him and he is very very tough to stop especially because i hate switching matchups and he legitimately forces you to so the most cheesy or the cheesiest card in season three is ping diamond magic johns next up we do have the defensive player of the season as you guys can see and it's between three guys here the first guy is a toker ward maurice lucas now the thing i'll say about maurice lucas is he's not talked about enough because of how poor he is on the offensive end really if you compare maurice lucas's stats even to wilt chamberlain and badges they're i'm not gonna say they're similar they're similar they're not equal but they're very very similar now the one thing obviously will has is his player model and his size but the thing about maurice lucas is he can play that power forward position he is a great defensive player at the power forward position i actually ran him unbadged in wagers stuff like that because of how great he's on the defensive end now i personally never badged him up uh just because that's a lot of mt to apply catch and shoot ranging center all those types of things but purely on the defensive end, the animations that he gets is a better version of Draymond Green. He's, I'm pretty sure, faster, better lateral quickness, better tendencies. I want to say better tendencies and way better badges than Draymond Green. So think of Draymond Green. We all know the kind of animations he got. Think of a taller, better badge Draymond Green. And that's what you have in Maurice Lucas. The next player here, I mean, guys, do I need to talk about him? I mean, Will Chamberlain on the defensive end. Wow. Like, that's all I can say. I get you guys might want to say, well, he's similar to Dwight, he's similar to Shaq. Yeah, he's similar, just as a lot of guys are similar uh, on similar things, but similar doesn't necessarily mean equal. Just because Wilt has similar defense as Shaq doesn't mean they're equal. Wilt's defense is far superior than any other player in the game, 
I guess I just gave it away uh, who the defensive player of the season is going to be. But when I say Will has incredible defense, no, I mean it. Is he worth locking in? Probably not because he can't really shoot. But on the defensive end, speed, height, lateral quickness, everything about it, you just got to love Will Chamberlain. The last player here is Diamond Andre Kirilenko now. As far as a purely like on-ball defender, it's hard to beat this card. Hall of Fame clamps, I believe, has some other badges. And if you could put Hall of Fame pick dodge a pickpocket on him, just trust me when I say he beats people up on the defensive end. Now, a guy that I did consider putting on here was Pink Diamond Paul George because he beats people up as well. But I just think AK has that one step above Paul George on the defensive end. And that is why he is my third player. But it's, it's no debate. Run away easily. One of the most easy uh, rewards to go out was the defensive player of the season with the best player of all time, Galaxy Opal Will Chamberlain. The next player here, or the next uh, subject here, is the most overrated player in season three. So the first card we're going to talk about is Pink Diamond Kevin Durant. And the reason I'm going to say overrated, first of all, the card still goes for over 300,000 MT. Now, I get he's an idols lock in. But a lot of people use this card and aren't going to lock in idols. Like, people legitimately like this card. Like, people legitimately would debate that this card is better than AK or Pink Diamond Paul George. And don't ask me why, because I don't have the answer for it. Because the thing about it is, current gen, next gen, it doesn't matter. His release is okay. I, I'm not going to hate on his release. I personally don't like his release. His defense is okay. I mean, it's, it's okay. But compared to AK, Paul George, Larry Bird, you just can't. And, and it's just like, the thing of the matter is, if his name wasn't Kevin Durant, nobody would be talking about that card anymore. That's just all I really have to say about it. Is he bad? No. Is he overrated? Yes. The next card is Pink Diamond is Shaquille O'Neal. Another card that I personally just don't like. You see a lot of content creators that run inside centers, run Shaq. And similar to KD, his name wasn't Shaquille O'Neal. People wouldn't run him. He gives you basically what Dwight Howard does. He's not that much better. He is a little bit better than Dwight, I think, but not enough in which you would notice it uh, if, if they just were swapped and, and switched around. And so that's the thing. It's just like the name brands on these two players is why I think they're overrated because I personally don't like either one. Last one is Pink Diamond, Joel Embiid. When people come in my chat saying, Ty, do you think Joel Embiid is the best center of the game? No, absolutely not. He's not better than Anthony Davis. Quite honestly, I don't even think he's better than Chris Bosh, okay? That's my personal opinion. And so for the MT that each one of these guys goes for, there none of these are even close to being worth it. People are talking about buying Joel Embiid, not even for Will Chamberlain, just to run it center. And he goes for 200, 300, 400,000 MT. It's just absolutely wild to me. But the most overrated player, in my opinion, is Pink Diamond Kevin Durant. Now, I'm kind of biased because he is this straight arm king. But if we do get a Galaxy Opal KD with a release on quick, I repeat, a release on quick is very, very important. Then KD might might get out of this overrated talk. After overrated, we do have the most underrated player that came out this season. Now, each one of these guys is very cheap for what they should be going for. Let's start with my investment of the season, Sean Kemp. So if you watched my No Money Spent squad series, you know that I invested in a lot of Amethyst Sean Kemp's for four or five, three, four, five thousand. And at one point this season, he was going for eight, nine, ten thousand. So, no, a guy came in my stream the other day saying he invested in 31 Sean Kemp's. You guys do the math. You buy them for four or five K, you sell each for nine or ten K. That take four thousand times 31, and you you got some good MT. So that's my first underrated player in this season. So basically, when I say Sean Kemp's underrated, I mean I run him on my no money spend account and have some good success with the card. I really, really do. I think he's a very, very solid player. Uh, can stretch the floor, has Hall of Fame showtime, and just does some things at a very, very high level. The next card is Amethyst CP3. Especially on next gen, it's hard to beat any card in the game for his price. Like next gen specific, you don't have to apply any badges, anything like that. CP3 is going to get the job done. He's basically an off brand Steph Curry. When I say off brand, no, I mean very, very off brand. But they give you this kind of same thing. You're just going to go off screen, shoot leaners. And I've had a lot of success with that Amethyst CP3 uh, card on my no money spend account. Now, the last card that I'm going to talk about is Clyde Drexler. Now, you have to apply some badges to Clyde for him to be a competitive type level player, but I don't think he's far off an Eddie Jones type of card. Like what he can give you, he's a not. I like his release, first of all, and that's a big thing to know. 
and I like his I like his versatility. He can attack the rim. He's got he's pretty lengthy. I think he's six foot seven. Badge wise, he's not bad. Like I said, you need to apply some, a few badges. But if you do that, I think Clyde Drexler is a very very underrated card in the game. But easily taking the easily taking the cake on next gen specifically. Chris Paul is so so underrated. And I say underrated. People know about Chris Paul. But they don't know about Chris Paul. Like, DBG was the first one to, to really put me on this card, and DBG was right. The next award we are going to go be going over is the token award. Now, this one's a, a no-brainer for me because you look at Hersey Hawkins, I don't think he's usable. You look at Hal Greer, he, I mean, people have used Hal against me, but again, I don't really think he's usable. Um, it's, it's getting harder and harder. Hopefully next season we have a better token rewards, like a couple pink diamonds, a couple of diamonds, something that I could actually compare it to because here really the only one I really used was Maurice Lucas and I used him for a little while. So by far and away, he is the most, he's most deserving of the best token reward for their specific tier in NBA 2K21 because neither Hal Greer or Hersey Hawkins really even deserves to be talked about, quite honestly. The next one is the budget MVP. A lot of people might make the... Uh, debate that Jonathan Isaac de deserves to be on here and you guys might be right like it's hard between him and Spicy B because both of them are very very elite I just think on next gen I prefer Spicy P's release and I prefer his badges just a little bit too much so the first guy we're going to talk about is Spicy P ever since last year I've just fell in love with Pasco Siakam cards I truly have if we get an Opal Spicy P pre 250k maybe even a pink diamond Spicy P he might be on my 250k squad that is how much I like the card we do got Sean Kemp as well, and it's kind of hard because we've already done the most underrated cards. So, Sean Kemp, you guys know me. I love Sean Kemp. And then we got him at this CP3. I talked about with Sean Kemp and CP3 already. You guys know my thoughts on them. But as far as the budget MVP is concerned, the same guy. I, I, I can't put CP3 over Sean Kemp in, in, in the underrated and not the budget MVP. So, CP3 taking the cake once again. Sean Kemp is a close, close second on both of these rewards. The next is the Mr. Inconsistent consistent award so we got three guys here paul george katie and rudy gobert so here's the thing with paul george pink diamond it's it's pretty tough he is similar to cam reddish if i could put cam reddish on here again i would but he is season two so he's similar to that they got the same release and so some days i love cam reddish some days cam reddish is the top three small forward in the game to me other days i want to quick sell cam reddish like if Cam Reddish could be quick sold, I would have have I would have quick sold him by now. He is that inconsistent for me. So some days I love him and green everything. Some days I just can't green anything with him. And so that's Paul George. Although I don't use Paul George that much because I've never really had him on my account because uh, he does cost a little bit more and I already have Cam Reddish. I don't use him that much, but it's the same exact release. So and, and Paul George has always been inconsistent in past games for me. So I already know Paul George would be super, super inconsistent for me if I used the card more. Next one is Pink Diamond KD, similar to, to every KD card in the history of 2K. Straight Arm King Kevin Durant. That is who he is, what he is, and what he does give you. I could talk all day about Kevin Durant but he is so, so inconsistent. Last player is Rudy Gobert. Same thing, kind of the chicken man, Tim. Some days I love Rudy's release, and then other days I just can't agree with him. At least with Cam Reddish, I give him more than one chance. Once Rudy sold me one time, he was off my team forever. But as far as Mr. Con inconsistent, as long as Kevin Durant is on my list, he is going to be it every single time. Next one is the best Evo, which... Did we even get any evos this season we didn't so i can't really talk about the best evo if we didn't get a player hopefully 2k brings some evo cards back i remember even last year i know it was earlier on but we got like the evo terrence ross in packs and we used to get evos up evo uh, players up in packs so yeah uh, hopefully they start incorporating evos once again or even if, if domination or the second domination maybe they're waiting for that but evos were a great great thing in 2k so Hopefully they bring them back. And the, le the next award is the auctionable MVP between three guys that I, I love each and every one of these guys. We do get Pink Diamond, Derrick Rose, the best auctionable point guard in the game. Now, I know I love John Stockton. And I know I love I run John Stockton on my main account. But the thing is, when you're comparing John Stockton to Derrick Rose, even with Hall of Fame range and Showtime, it's hard to say Stockton is better than Derrick Rose. Like, my Stockton has seven Hall of Famers, but still, a badge of Derrick Rose is just so, so elite. Love is behind the back. I love everything he gives me. And so, he is the best actionable point guard. Then we move to Diamond AK47, another player that just beats people up. When I say that on the defensive end, 
I hate playing against AK-47. The animations he gets are just absolutely incredible. And then on the offensive end, has one of the smoothest releases in the game. If you're looking for a playmaker, AK is not your guy. But a 3 and D card, there is no better one in the game than Diamond AK-47. And then a card that is so hyped up is Pink Diamond Kobe Bryant. In my opinion, is Kobe Bryant a card that should play on the best teams in the game? Yes, he should be. But should he be going for over 400, 500,000 MT? No chance. There's just no chance. He's incredible, but the rate at which he's going, guys, I would never suggest anybody picking up that Kobe card. But when, when we are talking about the auctionable MVP, how can you not say Kobe? Like, how can you not? He is the best card available on the auction house. A lot of people might disagree with me, but you guys can do your own thing. You guys play with Kobe enough, you will realize on the offensive and defensive end how elite that card is. The non-auctionable MVP is a very tough award this year, or this season. Very tough. Now, in my opinion, it's not as tough for me as most people just because of my play style personally. First card we're going to talk about is Chris Webber. Now, the debate now turns to Chris Webber or Wilt Chamberlain, who's better in between those guys i'll leave that up to you because i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna get on on something that i don't know enough about because i don't have either of these guys on my on my uh team so i haven't played with them in that much of a competitive type setting but chris weber gives you the blake griffin type of feel and he's different than blake griffin but he gives you that type of feel of a stretch big uh that can just knock down consistent jump shots his release is super super quick sh super easy to time does have steady shooter and only gold showtime uh, but but same thing with Will. Will doesn't have Hall of Fame Showtime either. He is obviously the best defensive player in the game, but can't shoot uh, really. I mean, you can green occasionally with him maybe, but gives you that inside center type of feel. And so he's a polar opposite of Chris Webber. And then we got a point guard in Dwayne Wade or shooting guard, point guard. I play him at point guard. And who is the season reward? I'm pretty sure every non actual MVP so far has been the season reward, I think. And this season, it's no different. Dwayne Wade is my non auctionable MVP because if, if I'm talking about a player that I think is going to play in 250K, it is this Galaxy Opal Dwayne Wade. Next up, we do have the All Ruby team, in which honestly, one through three, they're all shooting guards. It's hard for me to exclude any one of these guys. And so that's why I put them all in here. Offensively, <laughs> Good luck with this all Ruby team outside of Thon Maker because you just gotta love defense if you're gonna run this squad. But Iman Shepard, pretty sure, was a weekend reward if you completed all the weekend challenges. You could pick him up, and he is very, very solid. Honestly, obviously, you I would not ever recommend running him at point guard, but I couldn't not put him in my squad. Gary Harris, a guy that goes for a below like 2000 MT, just that 3 and D type player feel, similar to a Matisse Stiebel, who is also very, very cheap. Those two go hand in hand. Honestly, all three of those guys go hand in hand. Then we get to Ruby Jonathan Isaac. Could have been on, on the, made his case for the most underrated budget MVP. He is that good. I just think he's a little worse Pasco Siakam, to be completely honest with you. Uh, but he can definitely get the job done. His release timing is quick, has very good length at 6'11", and it's just a great plug-and-play option in any type of a setting. Then in the center position, we got a guy who is a lot better on next-gen than current-gen in Ruby Thon Maker now. I love his release. I love how he feels on next gen because he feels kind of like the Giannis. If you've played with Giannis on next gen, you know with the ball, they're just too fast for how fast they should be. It kind of reminds me of Mirasan. Uh, Mirasan's speed running up and down the court at the start of 2K20. So just kind of the feel that they give me. But no doubt about it, these guys are on my all Ruby team and on the defensive end they would wreak havoc next up we do got the all amethyst team starting off with the most underrated player the budget mvp chris paul next gen wise absolutely incredible kind of a budget steph curry current gen he's still very very solid i know i talk about next gen a lot for cp3 I still like his release on current gen i still you know he's going to be able to speak glitch he's still going to be able to get it done the only thing is he just doesn't have showtime that's really the only thing on current gen that just i'm not i don't that's why i don't love the card uh in a sense then we got drew holiday now Drew Holiday badged up is so elite. Even unbadged. If I had a most overlooked player, that would be a C or that would be Drew Holiday. I don't I wouldn't say he's underrated. I would just say he's overlooked. Because a lot of people that don't have Drew Holiday don't understand how good he is. Has the Zion current gen type release. Absolutely knocked down. And on the defensive end, let me tell you, he beats other point guards up. Then at the small four position, we do got Gerald Wallace now. I did want to get Xavier McDaniel on this team, but I just couldn't. He, Xavier McDaniel is quite honestly not, he's just not quite as good as Gerald Wallace. So that's why I did give the nod to Gerald Wallace at the small forward position. Another 3 and D player. And then you got Pasco Siakam. You got Siakam and Sean Kemp. I've already spent a, a while talking about these two, but 
I love those two in the front court. They be holding it down on my no money spent account. Then we're on to the all diamond team in which we got Jamal Murray, Eddie Jones, Scottie Pippen, AK-47, and Chris Bosh. Now, starting with Jamal Murray, I wouldn't say the diamond point guard uh, position in season three was that overpowered, but Jamal Murray badged up can hold it down. I don't love the card. I will, I will be the first to say that I haven't ever used the card in a competitive type setting. But I've played against a lot of Jamal Murray's, and he is just fine. Eddie Jones is a card I have used in competitive type settings. Still is on my team to this day. Do I think he's a top five small or shooting guard in the game? Probably not. But for his budget and for him being a diamond, is very, very good in the game. Next up is Diamond Scottie Pippen. A card a lot of people use in competitive type settings. I personally haven't yet, uh, but very, very solid. A lot of people want to compare him to Grant Hill. And just that he is drawing that comparison means that he deserves a spot on my old Diamond team. Next up, we do got Diamond AK, in my opinion, one of the best defenders in the game, especially as far as perimeter defense is concerned. Mo, he's so versatile. If you're looking for a 3 and D guy for your squad at the small forward or power forward position look no more than this diamond ak he is absolutely incredible one of my personal favorite cards in the game then we got diamond chris bosh a card that i personally have used in competitive type settings so whether you're using him for a competitive type setting using him on next gen just to have fun diamond chris bosh is a great option as a stretch big then we do got the last thing to for today the all pink diamond team starting with the backcourt of derrick rose and kobe bryant the two best auctionable guards in the game Starting with Derrick Rose, comes with 10 base Hall of Fame badges. You give him range extender. I personally like his release. Has Hall of Fame showtime. Gets showtime dunks, unlike Baron Davis. No doubt about it. Deserves a spot on the all-pink diamond team. Then we got Kobe Bryant. Beats people up on the defensive end. Is just a very complete player. A lot of people don't love his release, and I don't love it. It's, it's good, but I don't love it. It's not next tier. It's not base 98, but still is absolutely elite. Then we get on to the small four position, which I got pink diamond Paul George. A great 3 and D option. Once again, I love those types of players. Now, he is inconsistent. I do want to clarify that, but look no for, further than Pink Diamond Paul George and AK. It's, it's kind of those 3 and D options to plug and play. Then we get Pink Diamond Larry Bird. A lot of people like Larry Bird over at AK Paul George. And on next gen, I wouldn't disagree with you because of the Hall of Fame range extender and how overpowered that is. He's a very, very fun card to use. I just don't think competitively he's that next level in my personal opinion. And then at the center position, I feel bad for the people who weren't able to get Wayne Embry. I'm so thankful that 2K blessed me with this card because he is absolutely elite. I only had to win, I say only, like 70 triple threat offline games where people have played 200, 300 games and weren't able to get him. So thankfully 2K blessed me with this card because I absolutely love him. What awards would you like to see in in my season for a ceremony when we do get there let me know guys i missed in in the pink diamond diamond underrated overrated let me know guys that i just completely missed out on guys i hope you guys did enjoy the video drop a like on the video subscribe if you are new and as always man i love you guys and have a blessed day